Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill live this Sunday. There's a new report out from the Maryland Comptroller Brooke Lehrman. It finds that Maryland's economy has stagnated since 2017, well before the pandemic. I want to take a closer look at this now in Montgomery County as well with just over a million people. It is the most populous jurisdiction in the state. What happens there and how that rolls out could impact the larger state of Maryland. Mark Elwitz has been the Montgomery County Executive since 2018. What's being done to improve the economy? These are big questions for everybody. Yeah. You've got to look at this report from the comptroller. It's troubling. We already had a canary in the coal mine about this from the transportation you know, department. Oh, yeah. But what is this telling you right now and why is this situation the way it so is? So I'll say I will... To be honest, Montgomery, we did a report from Montgomery County, and it goes back even farther. It goes back to around 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. when things started flattening out. Um, one of our, our biggest problems, and I think it's statewide as well, is the inability to provide infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about, you know, there's a, there was a pivotal point in Virginia around 2008 to 2012 where they changed their tax structure. They leaned a lot more heavily on commercial property. But they took all that money and they built infrastructure, didn't use it for social, the things that would make the business community nervous. Mm -hmm. These taxes went strictly to invest in infrastructure. And it gave them the ability to build a silver line. Everybody's doing major transportation projects. Our county, no county around has the ability to do these projects because we don't have tax authority that Virginia counties have. And the state, you're trying to get a state that represents everybody. Yeah. To fund everybody. You, you mentioned this during the debate yeah. last year over the, the, the tax rate. At, yeah. at one point, you had proposed a 10% tax yeah. increase. Um, it was eventually lowered to 4.7%. A lot of that was needed, you said, because of the school budget yeah. that, that came in. But you also had said when you looked at what you had proposed, it didn't have any infrastructure spending on this. As you look into 2024 now, is that an itch that still scratches with you. Do you think you're going to go back to that council and say, I, I might want a 10% increase, and this no. time maybe it's not because of the schools, it's because of the inability to put infrastructure? No, so, so our problem can be solved by what I've been pushing is that we adopt the same structure that Northern Virginia uses for mm -hmm. taxes. It gives them a flow of taxes off of commercial property based on actual projects that are built that last about 20 to 30 years, it lets them pay for it with bonds. It doesn't require general tax increases. And it's worked very well for them. And obviously what we're doing isn't working. Mm -hmm. And our goal is, you know, I say this all the time, if somebody's stealing your lunch, you look at how they got your lunch. Mm -hmm. And you can see the investments they make. You can see the way they do it. And this was all done with the support of the business community. We're trying to line up. The same kind of thinking. I've, we can do this without any kind of general tax increase this year. I want to talk about crime because obviously yes. in the District of Columbia, that was the major story yeah. of uh, 2023. It was also a major <clears throat> story in Montgomery County. There were significant increases in, in you know, several factors of crime. Here's some of them right here on the screen. There were 28 homicides. That is up yeah. from 21 in 2022. Over 3,400 car thefts. That's up 130%. Mm -hmm. Uh, 112 carjackings, up from 40% in 2020. We had heard from police the morale was not great last year. You're still struggling to hire officers because, you know, there were vacancies and retirements mm -hmm. that, that may have caught <clears throat> off guard. What is your plan moving into 2024 to deal with these crime numbers that are scaring the heck out of a lot of people that live in your county? So, you know, we continue to recruit. Last year we put in place signing bonuses, and it helped a little. It didn't help as much as we would like. I and mean, the interesting thing is we got more applicants, but a lot of the applicants didn't pan out when you do background checks. You got to look at people. Are they coming here because they want to be here? Or are they running from someplace? So we found there were a lot of people who we just did not want to bring on. Uh, but we're looking at other changes. I mean, we have a policy. We can't rehire people. We're looking to rehire people. We're looking to be, be able to rehire up police officers and, frankly, in the fire department and be able to use them part-time instead of everybody having to be full-time because there are people who leave us and then go work part-time. And if they could leave us but then come back and be part-time employees in the police department or fire, that would be a good thing. Um, these cannabis convictions mm -hmm. under state law right now bar anybody from becoming coming. I mean, if you're going to legalize it, having that as a bar to employment is nuts, and we need to figure out how to deal with that in, in a more constructive way. I mean, you don't 
ban anybody who's ever had a drink from being able to be a police officer. So is this a hiring problem, or do we have something systemically wrong in this area that, you know, a lot of times young people are turning to crime? Well, that's... Thank you for saying that, because mm -hmm. <laughs> there are two different things going on. One is a, it, we do have a hiring problem, and we need to put more officers on the street. Um, the other thing is we've got a real disconnection problem in a lot of youth. And there, you know, I was a former school teacher, mm -hmm. and in, I was in a classroom with 10 and 11 year olds who said, "I don't think I'm going to live to be 25." If you don't think you're going to live to be 25, if you think that your future at that age is not going to be the future you want to live then it is really hard to keep them away from things because what the attitude is, what difference does it make what I do? We got less than a minute. You yeah. said something a couple of days ago that raised a lot of eyebrows. Maryland raised its minimum wage to $15. Yeah. You said you might think about doing it to 20 There are reports that fast food places are raising the prices of their food. How can small businesses sustain on $20 if you were to go to a minimum wage? So a lot of people already, are, you know, Montgomery's already at sixteen seventy mm -hmm. if you have more than 50 employees. And we know that just anecdotally, a lot of people are above $15 already because they have to be. How do you, have, how do you bring employees here if they can't live here on $15 an hour? We're going to have to end it there. Mark Elwards, yep. the County Executive of Montgomery County, thank you very thank much. You. Happy New Year to you.